so we're sitting here in uh, Hurricane Source headquarters in the fly shop. Um, Mike is tying some flies. Um, he's a professional fly tire from the States. Uh, and that's like your job. That's what you do. <laughs> it is. That's yeah. what I do all day, every day. Uh, and you're going to show us how to tie a fly that has been working really well here in Baltak? Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is going to be the small version of the Viking Midge. Yeah. So it's the mini Viking Midge. Mm -hmm. It ends up coming in at about four inches yeah. um, instead of about twice that for the original size. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a pretty quick pattern. Um, it's not very hard to tie. Um, there's just a lot of things you have to compress into a very small space because it's a shorter shorter bug. So we're going to go ahead and get this going now. Uh, the back hook on this is a is a stinger style hook. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got it in the vise here. It's a size four in this case. So I'm just going to get my thread started mid shank, and then go ahead and tie in two schlappen feathers. I'm going to go tip to tip on the schlappen feathers, um, spaced them out, and I can go ahead and hang them off the back. And they should hang off about one and a half shank lengths. Mm. You can clip those butts off and tie the, the schlap and end just a couple wraps over the top and then wrap right to the rear tie-in point. So the thread should hang down right at the hook point. If it goes any farther then you're cutting into the bend mm. and that's going to force the fly to spin. So you want to stop where the thread's hanging right at the point. Mm. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make the body of the back hook here with uh, polar chenille. So we're going to go ahead and just tie that in. A couple of turns over the top and then wrap right up to the eye of the hook. And we'll palmer that forward. Usually it takes about six to seven wraps on this. We're folding back the material each time around the hook shank, switching hands just to keep as much of it out as possible without binding it down to the hook. Mm -hmm. And the last step for the back half is your rubber legs. Find the midpoint and we're going to tie it in by the midpoint. One turn of thread takes it to the far side of the hook shank. Give it another two turns to hold it in place. When your thread comes up, you can take those legs, the other two off the front, mm. pull them down the other side, and then tie them down. So we now have four legs that are the same length, two on each side of the hook shank. A couple more turns of thread to form a thread head, cover up all the pieces of, of material that you've cut, and then finish right at the eye. And you are done with the back half of the fly. The next part is going to be to start the front half of the fly and make the connection from the back half to the front half. Uh, so the front half uh, is tied on an SP11 streamer hook. It's a longer shank streamer hook. Um, so you've got more space to tie in your materials on the front half. We will take a piece of connecting wire, three inches long, bring those two tips together and slide on a bead. Uh, the bead is uh, mostly just to hold the wire together to keep the wire from fouling uh, with the materials or the hooks. So the color is not very important, although I usually try and match it to the color of the fly. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get our thread started at this point, start at the eye, wrap right back to the rear of the hook. And we can take our wire and connect it in. It'll be side by side on the top of the shank so that that way the loop stays vertical in the back. I've got it right here so the wire is cut the right length, but it comes out over the eye. So I can put my finger on the side of the hook shank and pull back until those cut pieces are right behind the eye of the hook. Then I can come up to the front and bind this down. So when you do this, um, it's really going to be in three steps. You counterclockwise spin your thread to flatten it out and cover those, butts, those cut sections of wire. And then we're going to wrap right to the back give it a couple of turns and there's a three step process here to connect. So we're going to go back and forth with crossing wraps over the back half of the hook shank twice, come all the way up to the front, go back and forth over the front half of the hook shank twice, and then come all the way to the back and all the way up twice. By doing that with the thread under pressure and making crossing wraps so the wraps are going exaggerated forward and exaggerated back, the harder you pull on those, the tighter the wraps are going to get so you don't have to worry about gluing it. Uh, they won't pull out if you tie it in that way. Body for the back of the fly on this, we're going to add a little bit of flash underneath. So again, we're going to tie in polar chenille right at the rear. Tie it in and advance our thread up towards the front of the shank and wrap about the back half. Uh, it ends up being about five to six turns of the polar chenille. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and tie that off and add the rest of the body, which in this case is going to be marabou. For the feather on bottom, you're going to take the feather, come down the center stem, and just 
clip the center stem off, pull it apart so you've got a nice separation of fibers so that the fibers are going to come on either side of the bend of the hook when we tie it into place. Uh, when you're tying this to get a, a nice taper to the fly, you want what's called the rule of halves. So I'm going to take my finger, butt it right up to the eye of the hook and see where the tips go. They're a little bit long, so I'm going to come and shorten that up a little bit. You want the tips and the rule of halves to go halfway from the bend of the last piece of material out to the piece that was tied in prior to that. So the tips in this case should be right about the halfway point of the rear hook. So we adjust it so when my finger butts up against it, the tips are in the right spot. So I flip it over to the bottom, put my finger against the eye of the hook. I know it's the right length. Go ahead and bind that down to the hook. A couple turns forward, a couple turns back. You want to be careful not to come too far forward because we're going to tie in a weight and if you come too far forward and have uh, the butts in the way, it'll roll forward. So you want to make sure you cut them well back of where we're going to tie in the weights here in a second. Uh, we're going to finish the, the marabou body on top. Again, I'm going to take those fibers and hold them in place. Again, same rule as before. You want the tips to go just about the same length or even just a little bit longer on the top. So we're going to hold those in place on top couple of turns of thread to lock it into place, forward and back, and cut those butts. And I'll pull all the material out of the way and give it a couple more wraps for security. And then come up and at about uh, three to four millimeters back from the eye of the hook, I'm going to tie in uh, barbell eyes. They're small. So to tie these in, um, we're going to do it's, it's an adjusted figure eight wrap. So we're going to go uh, four to five turns in one direction bring our thread around, go four to five turns in the other direction, nice and tight, and then go two turns between the eyes and the hook shank and tighten that down. And I'm going to do that a second time. So one, two, three, four, five, come the other way, one, two, three, four, five, and then twice between the shank and the hook, tighten that down. The head on this fly finishes off, it's just going to be laser dub. Um, comes blown in a bag, so what you need to do to make it uh, work to tie these heads is pull off a pinch and then we're going to do what's called ripping and stacking, which is really just separating the material and stacking it back so the fibers all line up in the same direction and the same length. And we're going to hold it by the midpoint of the material and go two turns and tighten down. You can reverse it over itself couple of turns in front to lock it into place and then we're going to do a two-tone head so we'll do white for the bottom so we're going to do the same material same amount and prep it the same way so the white we're going to rip it apart and stack it usually takes five to six times to get it all lined up turn the fly over add the second material on the bottom so again tying it in by midpoint two turns tight thread and a couple of turns to lock it in and then we'll come up in front of the eyes. It can be a little less material because it's not that much space in front of the eyes and we're going to cut a lot of this part of the head off. We're just tying it in so we can shape it. So two turns and tighten, a couple turns in front and then the last color is to pull out your darker color for the top again. We'll separate that material and stack it a little too much. Turn it up top, pull everything out of the way so I can lay that last bit of material in. Two turns and tighten, pull everything out of the way and give yourself 10 to 12 wraps. As you pull the material back, you want the wraps to be tight and right at the base of the material which starts to stand that material up just a little bit and keeps it from crowding the eye of the hook. And we'll go ahead and whip finish right there at the eye of the hook. So to finish this off, the last step is to shave the head into a wedge. Um, the wedge is going to allow this fly to either be swum um, through the water column with a more of a steady retrieve or fished more as uh, almost like a nymph uh, bouncing across the bottom like the, pretty much what we were doing today on yeah. the river. Yeah. Um, so to do that, we're going to take the material, spread it out into kind of a double mohawk. You're going to leave about a third of the material sticking straight towards the back and that's going to be our collar and the rest of it we're going to trim to shape. So we'll start on the bottom. Using your scissors, you can set them right down on those eyes that you tied in and so as a guide, 
you set them down and adjust until your scissors are resting on the eye of the hook. You want the tips of your scissors to go right about the point of the hook. So when you trim, you're trimming about two thirds to three quarters of that hair on an angle from the eye of the hook through the eyes to the point of the hook. That's the angle for the bottom. So the same angle we use there, when we flip it over, we're gonna do that same angle on the head. So again, you can lay your scissors in right on the eye of the hook, keep about that same angle, and go ahead and trim your top so you get a nice wedge head. And the last little step is just to come in and clear the material that's right at the eye. And that is your mini Viking Midge. You make it look so easy. But it, uh, it's really interesting to see all the, um, like the rule of halves and, and mm -hmm. all those little tricks you have to get it the uh, same, same way all the time. Consistency in the flies is very important whether you're a production tire or not. For yeah. a person who's just tying for themselves, the only way you know how to change a fly to make it do something else yeah. is if you know how it's going to act the way it's tied now. Yeah. So you want your flies to be consistent in the way they look every time you do them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna result in the fly acting the same way in the water. Yeah. Um, so it makes it much easier for you as a fly tire to change it just a little bit to get yeah. it to do what you want it to do. Mm. That's cool.